it was sent to me and then I went in and met with uh, Julie Gardner and Glenn Morgan and I thought that the writing was fantastic. I thought that the role to play was really, really interesting, especially because there's a, an extreme duality to it. You know, there's two sides to my character that are really almost two different people, essentially. And, uh, and I heard John was doing it, and, uh, and it just all sounded like a win-win situation. I'd worked with the BBC many years earlier on a project called The Buccaneers, which James Frame was also in, crazily enough. And, you know, they're really known in the U.S. as a very high quality uh, producer. And uh, so I, I got on board. Um, I knew Julie Gardner and Jane Tranter from when they worked in England for the BBC. And Julie gave me a call and said she had the script. Um, would I meet up with her and discuss it? So I did in London and we talked about it. And she tried to, um, in a very long, over a very long coffee, she tried to explain the plot. <laughs> Which, which is very intricate, and so I sat there for a while trying to sort of work out, um, you know, what I'd have to do. And then at the end of it, I was like, wow, yeah, I'd love to read it. So I read the book, they sent me the scripts, and like Mira said, this writing was so good and it was so intriguing and it's such a great part to play, so many layers, nothing is as it seems. Um, and then, you know, they find out the pedigree, who's behind it, like Glenn Morgan, The X-Files, and Mira Sorvino. And so I was kind of, um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd always wanted to come over and uh, work in America and play in Americans, great opportunity. So it was lovely to be asked. Well, we'd, we'd wanted to work with him for ages um, because we had, you know, the whole, we're a small little scripted division. We'd loved Glenn's work on the X-Files and other things. And we had read the book, the Michael Marshall Smith Intruders book, and had wanted to adapt it for a number of years. And it just, it was just this great moment of synchronicity. Glenn came in, we gave him the book. We thought that tonally he would be perfect for it and would really get it. Um, and you did get it, you loved the book. Yeah, usually you go to a meeting and they give you, <laughs> here's a book or a graphic novel or a European TV show that we'd like to do in America. And then a month later they call and they go, how'd you like it? And I'm like, oh, I forgot to read it. But this one I read right, right away and I went there and I'm like, let's do this book because this book is great. Let's do this book and things went quickly. And I think, I think the fun thing for us and, or, or, and the strategy behind it is, is I used to work for the BBC in the UK and I've now been in LA for five years. And I think what we really wanted to do was, was take an American style budget, an American style production, all the values that come with that, all the, all the learnings that come with that, but give, give the series a little bit of a European twist. So it was a very deliberate idea to to be able to cast someone like Mira Savino in, on one hand and match her with John Sim and James Frain on the other and, and see how the mix of UK and US would play out. And I think, I think you've written a very American but very European piece. I think it was very American. <laughs> but I learned a lot from these guys on how the approach to, you know, how we shot it and then I would go, hey, uh, look at these movies from the 70s that influenced mm -hmm. on me, the Parallax View and All the President's Men, and they'd go, hey, look at State of Play. This is what we did here. And so they kind of, this kind of odd lovely. connection, but they all sort of fuse into a new kind of piece. But so what he's really saying is we got to watch great films and great TV along the journey. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hard life making yeah. television. <laughs> The job's very similar. It's just um, it was just adjusting for me, being um, in a different environment, which is great. You know, so I, I've worked abroad. I just haven't worked in America. Well, it's actually in Canada where we filmed it. Um, so it took a few days to get my head around where I was, and it's of, it was on a bigger scale to a lot of the stuff I've done. Um, so I, and also, you know, I had to take on board the fact that I was, you know, the, the guy that was leading the audience through all this. And I, it was just um, a, a hard work, but, but in a really good way and, and really, you know, great opportunities to concentrate and, and get on with it. And, and it was a, such a brilliant working environment that uh, it was 
it was a joy to go to work every day. It was, it was wonderful to film. I loved every minute of it. Uh, no, it's just like doing a more in-depth film because this is not like going to a 22 episode show. It's an eight episode show. So uh, it's just enough to really mine the depth and breadth of the characters and the storylines without getting attenuated and, and running out of steam. And I enjoyed the chance to kind of burrow into a role in a deeper way than you can in an hour and a half in a film. Uh, so, but it's the same kind of acting. It's just you do more you know, you do 10 pieces, but we actually shot it, um, we block shot it. So we did episodes one through four as one piece, but not necessarily in order. Um, so it was like shooting a, you know, a three hour movie and then shooting another three hour movie. And there was a real evolution from the first half to the second half. I think the second half is when things really speed up because then the audience is finally sort of up to speed about the secret society that our show is about. You just go with what, you know, you have a book and you go, oh, I like that, I like that, that, that. I like the way he's telling the story, which was very often, why am I hearing this? What, you know, you go, oh, the next chapter will be this, but then it wasn't, you know? And so you go, I like that, and we'd put it together. And then, you know, uh, Julie and uh, Jane Tranter would say, well, I don't get this, or can we do this, or I like what you did here, can we do more of it? And you just, and then you turn it over to BBC America, and they have that. I don't get this, and then there becomes, you're not done just because you wrote the script. That, you know, when we edited, we changed what we wrote a lot because we want to try to get the story to move faster or here to move slower. So it's just kind of by your gut and experience, or most importantly, what you want to do. I think it's um, it's a piece. It's it's a psychological thriller with a paranormal bent to it. And I think the idea of when you give the audience information, when you answer a question, is probably the most important, one of the most important creative choices that you'll make when you develop a show like this. And I think we start quite slowly in the first episode, but we, the velocity of the piece certainly builds. And it's, the, it's a kind of show because it's built on a novel. The first season answers the questions that are set up in episode one. So we don't leave an audience frustrated with, with well that's certainly not the intent, um, with, with the journey. Which is not to say we wouldn't have more going forward because I think, I think the subject matter of how would we all respond if we could live multiple lives, you know, this idea of a kind of strange reincarnation and a conspiracy behind it very naturally lends to, to a lot of storytelling. There's a lot to interrogate in, in such a big concept. And you always, in a mystery like that, or horror, you always want the big piece of information to go at the end of the scene. And so I think sometimes you might feel like, I'm not getting anything until the end, but we're giving it to you. When you went back and look at it, you go, or people have said, I don't know why this happened. I go, yeah, well, that thing in show one. I go, oh, you know, they realize they've, they're getting more than they realize.